you know, it's a creative output for me. So we started out, we named ourselves after the local garbage dump in Haugesund, which is called Ågabrot. But I've been part of this since the beginning and it's been uh, quite a few years. But then when the pandemic hit, we'd come to a, a place and time where it was really important for us to actually have a break and to have a little look at what we were doing musically and also with the band itself. When COVID started, it was a really good timing for us to really reinvent some of the things in Orabrot, figure out some changes that we needed to do for quite a while, but we never really had the time to do. We got the time to actually sit down and decide that me and Karin is the band. And then there's a drummer, sometimes Uta, sometimes others. Coming out of that, we're now in a really good place where we feel like, yeah, we're going in the right direction. There is something happening. I can feel that something is going, you know. We've been in the punk underground for a long time. Now we're on our way to some sort of uh, rock and roll overground. For everything we do, a new record that we did with Alain Johannes was recorded and produced entirely in the house, in the church. And you can hear that. You hear the vibe of it. It is a special place, because if you go somewhere else and do work, record, you get a different sound and a different experience. I grew up around there. I went there with my parents every Sunday. I had my first performance on stage in the church when I was two years old. So it really goes way back for me with a lot of memories. And I always felt like I wanted to turn it into some kind of culture house, but I didn't think anyone would ever want to move there. You know, we were really lucky to find this place. And we were talking about getting out of the city for numerous reasons and to get a creative space like this. When me and Shetil met, we were quite far apart musically, and we over the years gradually gravitated closer and closer to each other. My partner, my lover, my wife, my best friend, and we uh, tend to do everything together. And now we're both fronting the band and we've been growing closer and closer over the years. I feel like now Orabrot is almost like an extension of the lives that we're living and it's like a mixture of the music that we're listening to, all the books that we have at home, all the records that we have, our love life and our family life and everything that we love is like put into this pot that just is Orabrot now. There are no masks because this is it's a lifestyle. What we do is we present this rock music, which is all about, but it's also it's a lifestyle. And we are lucky to be able to do this together. We wake up almost every morning feeling privileged for the situation we're in. It wasn't like that at all. For many years, it was very different. It was a difficult thing. It was like a struggle. After I got sick 10 years ago, I was really sick. Then when I got out of that, I was living on a high for a long time. Because if you, you almost die, then you see life in a new way you know, because you've had your second chance. I realized that some of the issues I had back before even those sickness, they were still there because I didn't process them in any way. I was just on that high. But I saw that in the process of dealing with these personal traumas or problems or whatever it was, then there was something very positive in that process. When I was a kid, I had a really vivid imagination and I wanted a magical world. And then you grow up and the system teaches you that the world isn't magical. The way I was brought up was that someone else was always responsible for my reality and that I was just basically born into sin. And if I would believe in God and believe in Jesus, then I would receive forgiveness. To me, occultism represents more of that. 
is not necessarily only you as a person, but you as an energy and everything in the world can be altered in different ways. And when I discovered that the world actually is magical, and I discovered that through occultism, and then I'm like, I was right the whole time. The system couldn't beat me. But to me, ultimately, the fact that you can actually go in, work with your interpretation of the world and you can change things in a magical way, that's the coolest part. The live thing is a very natural part of the band. When I was in church, I used to uh, sing, and I'm grateful for the fact that I got an opportunity to sing every Sunday and train like my stage fear. We try to uh, present something powerful and hopefully unique, like a unique setting, like a unique atmosphere, which, which is the uh, Orabot sound. Now when we play with Orabot, then it's really like about getting it out. And sometimes uh, like a punch in the face, but other times uh, quite groovy and rocking and fun. It's really powerful and it's heavy and it's like a chance to really let everything out and do whatever you want to do. You know, sometimes I'm almost like scared before the gig because I don't know how I'm gonna feel and it's like really a, like a bit of a chaotic thing, you know, you can just lose control in a way. For me, that's a, a cool experience because I don't so easily lose control in that sense. There's a lot of people who come ask questions about like, why do we dress up the way we do? Why this masquerade? We play in the clothes that we got married in and it just feels like a natural thing. I have the big hat and our white outfits and there's a cross behind us when we play live, the light cross. The cross that we have on stage is the cross that uh, is on the church that we live in. It is our lives and, you know, we're not fucking around with it. We are serious about it and we, this is what we do. We just do what we love doing and we're doing it in the way that we want to do it. It's a genuine thing. It comes from the heart and this is who we are. There is something there which I think can become something very cool and big and great. It's just a matter for me and Karen to go and get it. The whole path is laid out before us. It's basically just to follow that path towards this potential, which is Orobotan. Yeah, the Thomas Fighting God. <laughs>